Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about managing injection site reactions with peptide therapies. We'll go over some tips and strategies to help you get through this. So peptide therapies have gained significant attention in various medical fields, including sports medicine, anti-aging treatments, and weight loss. However, like many injectable medications, peptide therapies can sometimes lead to injection site reactions. These reactions, which may include bruising, pain, redness, and itching, can be bothersome, but are typically manageable with proper care and attention. If you've had an injection site reaction, you may be wondering if it's an allergy or something you can manage at home. So in this podcast, we'll talk about what you need to know about injection site reactions and how to take care of them. So before we discuss managing strategies, I think it's really important to understand how injection site reactions can occur. To put it simply, they happen if something in the injection irritates your skin or if it causes your immune system to overreact. When the reaction is caused by an irritant, it tends to happen quickly, like within a couple hours, and it can last up to a few days. On the other hand, reactions that kick your immune system into high gear can develop in a few hours or a few days later, and they last much longer. Keep in mind that injection site reactions typically do get worse over the first 24 hours, but things should get better after that. So what are some common types of injection site reactions? The common types of injection site reactions that may occur with peptide therapies are things like bruising, pain, redness, warmth, or swelling, and itching. Now, bruising at the injection site occurs when small blood vessels are damaged during the injection process. This is going to lead to leakage of blood into the surrounding tissue. And pain. So injection site pain can be varying in intensity and in duration. And it honestly just depends on what type of injection you're giving. So are you giving a sub-Q or fatty tissue injection or an intramuscular injection? It may result from tissue trauma, even some ner- nerve irritation, or just by the s- simple properties of the injected peptide itself. So redness, warmth, or swelling. So redness is also called erythema, which can happen at the injection site. And it's typically a sign of inflammation that's caused by the body's immune response to the injection. And then as far as itching is concerned, itching in the medical world is what we call pruritus. And at the injection site, it can happen because histamine release occurs at that site or there's just irritation of the skin in general. So how do you manage injection site reactions? There's many practical tips and strategies to help manage injection site reactions associated with peptide therapies. First and foremost, you'll want to make sure you're practicing good hygiene. So before and after administering your injection, thoroughly clean the injection site with an alcohol swab to reduce the risk of infection. Additionally, wash your hands with soap and water to maintain proper hygiene throughout the injection process. The next thing you'll want to make sure that you do is rotate your injection sites. So to minimize the risk of tissue damage and reduce the likelihood of developing injection site reactions, it's important to rotate injection sites regularly. Even if you're giving yourself an injection once weekly, you will still want to rotate your injection sites. So alternate between different areas of the body, such as going from the belly to the thighs, to the buttocks, to the back of the arm, following the recommended injection techniques obviously provided by your healthcare provider. The next thing you can try is applying a cold compress. So immediately after the injection, apply a cold compress for about five to 10 minutes or an ice pack to the injection site to reduce any of the redness, warmth, swelling, bruising, and even pain. Cold therapy really helps to constrict blood vessels and minimize any of that blood leakage from the capillaries into the surrounding tissues. So it should help decrease those bruises. The next thing you could try on the opposite end is applying a warm compress. Now, warm compresses can be soothing if your muscle hurts after an intramuscular injection. Just remember to be really careful and not burn your skin. So you can apply a warm compress for about 15 to 20 minutes. The next thing I want to talk about is making sure you use the proper injection technique. Ensuring that you're using the correct injection technique as instructed by your healthcare provider is essential. This includes proper needle insertion angle, injection depth, and how fast you're injecting the injection. You'll want to avoid injecting it too quickly or forcefully as this can really increase tissue trauma and discomfort. 
trying to piggyback off that last point I make is really it's a good practice to get feedback on your injection technique from a healthcare provider. The way you inject your medication could be the cause of your injection site reaction. So just simply asking your healthcare provider to watch you give yourself an injection so they can give you constructive feedback and advice on where to properly inject. Some other things that you might be able to try are over-the-counter pain relievers, such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen. They can really help alleviate injection site pain and discomfort. Other things like anti-itch medications that you can find over-the-counter. So if you're having a lot of itching at the injection site, you can try an antihistamine like diphenhydramine. And then you'll also want to, when you're injecting, avoid any irritated skin. So any sites where your skin is already irritated, if you have a rash, if you have cuts, scaling, or even plaques from psoriasis, this is because irritated skin is already inflamed and it's really more likely to have a reaction. You also want to avoid scratching. So while itching at the injection site can be uncomfortable, you'll really want to avoid scratching or rubbing the area because this can make the irritation worse. And it can also increase the risk of infection. So instead, if you have itching and the -the over-the-counter antihistamines don't work, you can gently pat or massage the area to help alleviate the itching sensation. So what are some more serious symptoms that you really need to be aware of? More serious symptoms can really be a sign that you're experiencing something else. So if you notice anything like hives, a fever, excessive fatigue, blistering at the injection site, or severe swelling, you should really talk to your healthcare provider. These symptoms could be due to an allergic reaction or even a skin infection. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. We love having you as part of our community. If you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media and have a happy, healthy week.